Hi, and uh, welcome back to these videos on uh, neural networks. So in this video, we'll look a little bit more at the, at one particular architecture for neural nets. And this particular is the feed forward neural network, which is, I guess, the, the simplest uh, form of neural network architecture that there is. Um, and basically the idea is when we're training a neural network, which we haven't yet covered, but we will cover in, in one of some of the next videos, uh, the basic idea is that before you start training, you choose the architecture of the neural net first. So I guess the question is, what is the architecture, right? The architecture is the nodes or the neurons, as we call them. Uh, so these are all the nodes there, all the edges of the network as well. You can see pointing over here and also all the activation functions, right? So this is something that we choose uh, before we start training. Now, the training part, when you train a neural network, uh, the only thing that changes there are the weights, right? So we are updating all these weights that are, are shown in different colors. So the weights on the edges of the neural net, but the activation functions stay fixed. The edges of the neural network stay fixed and the nodes of the neural networks will stay fixed. Now, this means if we go back to this uh, figure that we've seen a couple of times on supervised learning, the basic setup when we do uh, supervised learning with neural nets is that this hypothesis set H down here uh, when we're running a learning algorithm, H will be all neural networks with a fixed architecture, right? So the nodes, the edges, and the activations are already chosen and fixed. Uh, so then we have a hypothesis for every choice of the weight parameters uh, in the neural net. Okay, so that's the that's the kind of the hypothesis that we're working with uh, when we're running supervised machine learning with neural nets as the the fixed architecture neural net uh, as the hypothesis set. Okay. So we haven't yet seen a learning algorithm for actually picking a good hypothesis. We mentioned briefly that it will be based on gradient descent, but we will get back to that in, in more detail. Okay, so the most common or simplest uh, architecture for a neural network is what's called a fully connected feed forward neural net. So the basic idea of the, of the architecture in a feed forward, a fully connected feed forward neural network is that each of these hidden layers that sit between the input layer and the output layer uh, they have all the neurons in that layer connected to all the neurons in the next layer through the output edges. So they go to so every neuron is connected to everyone in the next layer, but also they're connected to everyone in the previous layer as an input. So you can see here, right, every neuron here at the input layer is connected to every neuron in the hidden layer, and every neuron in the hidden layer is connected to every neuron in the output layer. So that's the, the fully connected part uh, of the neural net, right? Because every node in one layer is connected to every node in the next layer. And we're gonna see a, a couple of other architectures that are useful in particular for, for image recognition. We're gonna briefly visit them uh, later on. Okay, so <clears throat> when we're working with these fully connected neural networks, we'll in particular also for implementing them, it will be convenient to introduce uh, I guess a vectorized notation for all these weights and stuff that are part of the neural network work, right? So we'll spend a little bit of time now on introducing just a kind of vectorized and matrix and, and a notation with matrices just for, for describing what happens with such a neural net. Okay, so the first thing is that all these weights that are sitting in the neural net uh, will represent them such that uh, for level i, there will be a matrix wi that represents all the, the, the weights of the edges going into that layer, right? So there will be, um, I guess for this middle layer, layer here, there'll be a matrix representing all the edges, the weights and all these edges that come into this layer. Also all these biases, right? So we also have edges that connect the bias neuron to these uh, neurons in, in the layer. We are gonna represent all those biases again by a vector uh, for that layer. So the BI would be the vector of biases for the ith layer. Okay, so, so roughly we'll have such uh, matrices and vectors. And also in these uh, feed forward fully connected neural networks, we're gonna assume that all the neurons in the same layer, so in layer I, they all use the same activation function, let's call it phi I. So the activation function can change throughout the layers, but in any fixed layer, they, all the neurons use the same activation function. Okay, so which means that with this description here, that's going to be a matrix W1 describing the edge of these, or the weight on all these four edges here uh, coming in. There's going to be a, a bias vector B1 representing these two biases. There's also going to be a weight matrix W2 representing the weight on these two edges. And there's going to be a bias vector B2 representing the, the weight on this single edge. There's also going to be a phi1 activation function representing the activation function of these two neurons in the hidden layer. 
and there's going to be an activation function phi two representing the activation function on the output layer. Right? So those are the parameters that make up a neural net. Okay, so <clears throat> the shape of these matrices. Let's just also talk about how uh, how we put these place all these weights inside the matrices. So we say here that if we're looking at layer I, right? We're looking at the matrix W I. Then if the previous layer has M non-biased neurons, so these are the X1 and X2 neurons here, the non-biased neurons. And if this layer has K non-biased neurons layer I, then the, the matrix of weights is an M by K matrix. Right? So it has one row for each of the neurons feeding into the layer and has uh, one column for each of the neurons in the layer. Okay, so one column per layer in layer i neuron, one row per layer i minus one neuron, and the, the column j gives all the weights on the edges that lead into the jth neuron in, in this layer, right? So the, the first column of the matrix here, so this is the matrix W1. The first column consists of two weights, W11 and W21. So those are the two weights in the, in the first column, and they correspond to these two edges here. So the row number corresponds to which of the two neurons from layer I minus one that the weight is associated to. Right? So this is just uh, one way of representing it. And this is the way that we're going to do it, that the columns give the, the layer I neuron, the index of the layer I neuron, and the row gives the index of the layer I minus one neuron. So similarly here, right, the, the second column of this weight matrix here has these two weights stored in it, the ones that come from X1 and X2 into the second neuron in layer I. Okay. So also if we have K non-biased neurons in layer I, then the bias vector BI is just a row vector that has K entries, like one for each of them. So it has one entry for each of the neurons in, in layer I, and the, the jth entry just gives the bias of the jth neuron. So, so basically here, right, uh, the first entry gives the bias of the first neuron, and the second entry gives the bias of the second neuron. So these are just the weights on these edges here. Okay, so <clears throat> what we can do now with this representation, we can talk a little bit, or we can write the evaluation of such a fully connected feedforward neural network uh, in a matrix vector notation, which will also be convenient, particular if implementing this. So uh, if we say that X is a row vector that gives the inputs to these non-biased neurons in layer I minus one, right? So in here, vector, the vector X would be X1, X2. These are the inputs to these two, two neurons here. Uh, then if I, if I take this vector X and multiply it to the left onto the weight matrix in between these two layers, then, this gives a new row vector. And okay, and then finally, after multiplying, we also add uh, the biases. Then this new vector here, if we look at what are the entries of this vector here, if you look at the jth entry, then what does it equal, right? So the product here will be, well, it's the inner product between the jth column of wi and x, right? So this is uh, basically what we have here, right? So this is supposed to be the inner product. This is a column vector. So the inner product between the jth column of W and uh, and the vector X, and then plus the jth entry of the bias. So this basically means because the jth column is giving uh, the weight. So now so let, let's look at this, the second entry here, the second entry of X WI plus BI. The second entry is now doing the inner product between the second column of W. The second column of W had the weights on the edges going into the second neuron. So basically you're gonna take X1, multiply it with the first of these weights and X2 multiply it with the second of these weights. And then we're gonna add the bias, uh, the second bias here. So that's this bias here. So this is exactly uh, the, the, the signal of this neuron, right? So, so basically if we look at the whole expression X WI plus BI, then this is a, a row vector and each of the entries give the output of all the non-biased neuron in, in layer I, if we use identity activation, right? So it just gives the, the signals that comes into these uh, neurons, okay? So, so this is a very convenient way to, to think of what's happening here. I can just do one matrix vector multiplication here and add a, add a vector, then we get uh, all the, the uh, outputs of these neurons in, in the hidden layer. Now, we also had this activation function here, and uh, if we now take this activation function uh, 
and apply it entry-wise uh, to each of the elements of this vector, then actually we have computed precisely the output of these non-virus neurons in level, level I, right, or layer I, because they what they do is that they apply the activation function to the signal that comes in. So applying this entry-wise, uh, so basically this is what's happening here. If I have a vector, then we think of this notation that we take the activation function applied to the vectors, the same as applying it entry-wise to each of the entries of the vector. So with this notation, right, uh, apply phi i to x times w i plus b i, that takes the uh, output of the neurons, non-biased neurons on layer i minus one and turns it into the output of the non-biased neurons in layer i. Okay, so, so this is what we, if we think about it again, right? So the output here of these neurons that are sitting here in the hidden layer, they will be phi one applied to x times w one plus b one. Now, if you, this is now a row vector that you feed into the next layer. And so the next layer, just by recursing, will then take this row vector, multiply it onto W2, add the second bias, and finally apply uh, the second activation function, the activation function of this layer. Right? So this is uh, it's basically what it's computing. And in general, right, if we have K of these layers, then what's happening is that we start in the very, at, at the bottom layer here, this is the deepest nesting. And what's happening here is that this is the evaluation of the, it is, this gives the outputs of the non-biased neurons in the first hidden layer. So here we take the input feature vector and multiply it onto the first uh, weight matrix from the left at the first bias vector and apply the first activation function. This then to compute the output of the second hidden layer neurons is then multiplied onto W2. You add the second bias and apply the second activation function. This then gives a new uh, vector, row vector, that has all the outputs of the second layer hidden neurons. And you can just keep going until finally you've produced the output of the whole neural network. So really uh, evaluating such a neural network is just this whole chain or nested chain of, uh, of multiplying a vector onto a matrix, adding uh, a vector and applying an activation function. And this is all that's happening when you're uh, evaluating a neural network. And also this notation is also convenient that if you say would like to, if you have a whole data matrix, uh, so the standard representation that we've seen several times before, right, where each of the input vectors are placed in, these feature vectors placed a row of the matrix, then uh, if you wanted to evaluate the neural network simultaneously on all these inputs, then uh, all that's happening, right, if you're actually taking this whole matrix and multiplying it onto uh, W1 here, all you're getting is actually a new matrix where each of the rows basically gives the row vector that you would have gotten if you just take, say, the first of these rows of uh, x, meaning the first data uh, point, and um, multiplying it from the left onto W1, and so on, right? So basically what's happening here is that you just get a matrix where the rows are precisely the result of evaluating, uh, passing each of these input points, uh, input feature vectors through the first layer of the neural net. Uh, of course, we still have to add the biases. So uh, we can now, let's say we introduce a notation here. If I have a matrix that's n by k, and I now have a row vector with k entries, then we can do, we introduce a special notation here that a row wise addition with b just means that we add b to all the rows of, of, uh, of a. With this notation, right, if we then row wise add the first bias vector, this is this gives us uh, precisely for every input feature vector, it gives uh, the output on the, the first hidden layer neurons if we had not yet, uh, if the, I say, the activation function was the identity function. Still need to apply the activation function. So what we can do now is just, if we apply the activation function to this, and we say that this is a row-wise application of the activation function, which is then again an entry-wise application of the activation function. So, so it's just apply the activation function to every single entry of the whole data matrix. Uh, then we get the outputs of all the neurons in uh, the first hidden layer. Right. So, so this basically tells us for every single input feature vector simultaneously, uh, what are the outputs of all these uh, neurons in this layer, and they're placed as rows of a matrix, one row for each of the n uh, input feature vectors. Right. So, so this just the jth row of this thing is just what you would you have gotten if you took the feature vector xj and passed it through the first layer of the neural net. <laughs>
which means that you can also just stack all these things together. If you have a whole data matrix, then uh, what you get is if you start at the first layer and you take the whole data matrix, multiply it with the first uh, matrix of weights and row wise add the first uh, bias vector, then you apply the first activation function. And then you repeat where you think of this. Now this is a matrix. You multiply it from the left to the second weight matrix. You row wise add the second bias uh, vector and then you apply the second activation function and so on when this finishes the result will be uh, one matrix it has a row for each of the input feature vectors and it has a column for each of the output neurons containing the value of that output neuron on this uh, concrete uh, exchange and so this is really like batch evaluating a, feed, a fully connected feed forward neural network just with matrix uh, uh, multiplication and row wise addition uh, on each of these layers, plus uh, applying the activation functions uh, on each of the entries of the of the matrix. So let us maybe just uh, conclude here with a little bit of a small remark on how you can implement this uh, row-wise addition if you wanted to implement it in Python. Right. So recall again, like this row-wise addition. If I have an n by k matrix and a row vector b, uh, then the, the row-wise addition here is just that you add B to all the rows of A. And you can do this easily in Python. So here's an example where you create a matrix M. It's a three by three matrix. It has these entries, all of them are one, just for simplicity. And now you create a, a vector that I want to add row-wise. So I create the vector one, two, three. Now, if I reshape it into a one by three matrix, then it's gonna look like this. So now it's a one by three matrix. And now I can actually, in Python, I can just add them up. And Python figures out that because this is only has one row, but the same number of columns as M, what it's going to do is it's just going to copy this W essentially and add it to all the rows. So Python will actually do row-wise addition by, by B, as you can see over here on the output. Uh, this is what Python implicitly does. Okay, so this, this is simple to implement in, in Python if you just do this, this reshaping trick. Uh, if, you're, if you don't like it, you can also do it using standard linear algebra. So what you could do, which I guess would technically be if, you, if you're more comfortable with standard linear algebra, you could form an all ones column vector that has uh, n entries. And if you take this all column ones column vector and multiply it with B, this becomes an outer product, right? Because B is a row vector and one is a, a column vector. You get this outer product here one with B1 to BK. What's going to happen here if you compute this product is that you're actually going to place a copy of B in every row of the resulting matrix. And when you add this to A, it's going to actually give us a row-wise addition uh, with the B uh, vector to all the rows of, of A. So you can easily implement all of this, uh, either just using that Python has this automatic uh, reshaping, or you can maybe compute an outer product with an all ones first, if you feel like you want to write it uh, more in a, in a more natural way. Okay. So, so this concludes the talk of how these feedforward neural networks, uh, how you can maybe represent them as in matrix vector notation with all the activation functions. And now in the next video is we're gonna look at how can you then train these weights in these neural networks.